you. How long have you been a legal secretary? 24 years this spring. You good at what you do? I'm great at what I do. Then you start tomorrow. Thought I made it clear last time we talked. I'm not interested in whatever you're selling. Well, you're going to be interested in this. There is no deal you're going to put in front of my face that's going to make me want to get in business with you. You're not doing it to get in business with me. You're doing it to keep me from getting into business with Tony Giannopoulos. Because right now, Harvey is over there pitching him the same deal. You think I give a sh what deals Harvey Specter does? I think you give a sh what deals Jonathan Sidwell does. And you're here to pit us against each other just to jack up the price. Damn right I am. Then you can walk your ass out that door right now. Because I guarantee you that's what Sidwell's telling Harvey. And what Harvey's telling him is that one of you is going to be on CNBC tomorrow announcing their new deal. And the other one's going to be left with nothing but his dick in his hand. So it's up to you. But whoever calls first is going to have it over the other one for the rest of their life. Clock's ticking, Tony. I get a text, and he beats you to the punch. I'll walk out that door. So what's it going to be? You're a son of a bitch. I like that. I'm in. I'm in. Get out. Hey, get out. Harvey, you and me are going right now. No, we're not. Yes, we are. And it's happening whether you like it or not. Ooh. Now, you want to tell me what was going on with that bullshit back at the house? What bullshit? I wasn't hungry, so I just left. I'm not buying it. I know something's up with you. Nothing's up. Nothing? <clears throat> Your little brother was excited to see you. You didn't give him the time of day. Marcus was excited to get Bobby's car. <clears throat> Since when you got something against Bobby? He never did anything to you. Just let it go, Dad. <clears throat> Since when do I do that? Since when were you around not to? Excuse me? He said let it go. <clears throat> not let it go! You disrespected me. And you disrespected your brother and your mother and our guest. Now I know something's up with you. I want to know what it is. <clears throat> Nothing. Not nothing! Why are you doing this? Because there's something wrong with my boy. Something's wrong with me? What about you? How can you not see what is going on under your nose in your own goddamn house? All right. Ah, son, stop! I told her to stop, but it shouldn't have had to. It should have been me! I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You told her to stop what? What was your mother doing? Bobby. But the truth is, this case is about nothing more than cold, hard innuendo. And the fact is, I'm capable of reciting every element of jurisprudence in the state of New York. And yet, despite that, the prosecution is going to try to convince you that I am a fraud. Who not only didn't pass the bar or go to law school, he didn't even graduate college. There isn't one piece of hard evidence proving that I didn't go to Harvard Law. There is no record of tuition being paid. No record of a Boston address. There isn't even a simple picture in the yearbook. Let's talk about the yearbook. As he told you, I'm not in the yearbook. Where is Mike Ross? Now, what he didn't tell you is that 25 other students are also not in this yearbook. Now, are those other students being charged with fraud? Of course not, because we don't put people on trial for being sick on picture day. And no matter what he says, the fact is Mike Ross is not a lawyer. He's a fraud, and we will prove that beyond a shadow of a doubt. The defense would like to call its first witness. Right there. He's such a non-lawyer, he doesn't even know the prosecution goes first. And you obviously don't know Jarvis v. The State of New York, 1937, when calling of the first witness is of such special nature as to disrupt the flow of the trial once it started. What the hell's special nature are you talking about? When the defense wants to call the prosecutor as its first witness. Harvey, unless you have something to overturn this, I'm going to need you to have a seat. Mr. Spector, you said there's no record of me ever having an apartment in Boston. Can you explain to the jury why there's no record of you ever having lived there? 
I'm not the one on trial here. No, you're not. You're the one in that chair, so why don't you answer the question or we can stop this whole thing right now. There's no record of me living there because I sublet up there when I had my place down here. So it is possible that a person not have a Boston address without it meaning that they didn't attend Harvard. Great. Thank you so much. This witness is excused. What exactly is your reason for not having an address up there? Unless you're too afraid to answer my questions. No, I'm not afraid of you at all. My reason is that I chose to live with my friend Trevor during that time. The only problem with that is your friend Trevor has lived in Brooklyn his entire life. Exactly a three hour and 20 minute drive from Harvard. So you say you made that drive every day? No, I only went up for tests because that's all I had to do. I guess you needed some extra tutoring, huh? You expect these people to believe that you graduated from the most competitive law school in the world without ever going to class? See, that's funny because you actually expect these people to believe that I never went to law school at all and yet still somehow managed to convince the smartest lawyers in the world to make me their youngest partner ever. Whose story is looking more far-fetched now? Oh, no answer? Great. No more questions, Your Honor. I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but he's kicking your ass. And I'm about to kick back. Are you two discussing something that defense should be made aware of? Just talking about the Knicks. Now, is the prosecution ready to call their first witness? The prosecution's first witness is this affidavit from every single member of the defendant's supposed graduating class. Objection, Your Honor. I haven't seen that. Well, then let me read it to you. We collectively come forward to swear the following regarding Michael James Ross. We never saw him. We never knew him. We never heard of him. And it makes us sick that he's taking the good name of Harvard Law School and throwing it down the toilet. Please find him guilty on all counts. Your Honor, I move to strike that document right now. On what grounds? On the grounds that it's completely fabricated. Where's your proof? Besides the fact that I actually went to Harvard, there's no way you could have contacted all of those people since last night. Then I suggest you call every one of these people and put them on the stand. But when you do, every single one of them is gonna look you in the eye and say, who the hell are you? What? No snappy comeback? You can try to trick these people all you want, but the fact is, you didn't go to Harvard, and this proves it. Objection, he's testifying. What I'm doing is winning. All right, that's enough. I think this is a good time to take a break. Thought you were trying to avoid me. I was. Then I figured out you knew it was me anyway. How? Does it matter? No, it doesn't. So why are you here? I just wanted to say thank you. You're welcome. I also wanted to know why you're letting it go. Because Rachel begged me to. And because she said that she loved you and that you turned your life around. And you believed her? I believe that she loves you. But if you really want to know the truth, no, I don't believe that you turned your life around. And I definitely don't believe that you love her. What? How can you say that? Because you've convinced her that it's all going to be OK. That you two are just going to get to live happily ever after. And I didn't want to be the one to make that all come crashing down. But you know what, Mike? One day, it is going to come crashing down. And if you really do love her, you'll put a stop to this right now. So you think I should stop being a lawyer? I'm saying if you really love her, you won't marry her. I knew this was a mistake. I never should have come here. Michael, you didn't actually have to come here. I already knew your story. Trevor came to see me six months ago. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, but you didn't know that he spent most of that time talking about you or the fact that he blames himself for everything that happened well, to you. Well, maybe he should. Maybe you should blame yourself. Right, maybe I should blame myself for every earthquake or every war. That's enough right. of the vanity, okay, Michael? Vanity? Yeah, vanity, self-indulgence. Whatever you want to call feeling sorry for yourself ever since that night. How dare because you? Because that's exactly why you're in this position. No, right I'm now. in this position because Trevor put me no, in Michael, this position. No, Michael, no. That's the difference between you and Trevor. He's actually accepted that his choices were his own, which means he actually wants to change his life. And you think I don't want to change? Why the hell do you think I'm here? I don't know. Why are you here? I told you, I want advice. No, no, people do not need the protection of the confessional to get advice. I did that to protect you. No, you did that to protect you. So you tell me right now, why are you here? It's not that simple. It is that simple. No, I can't. Why are you here? Because I'm afraid!
What are you afraid of, Michael? They left me all alone. And now you've found someone who loves you. And if you stop being who you are, you're afraid she'll abandon you too. What am I gonna do? Come with me, Michael. I want to show you something. Given that you smoked all this pot, Mr. Evans, isn't it possible that if Mike Ross commuted one day a week to Harvard Law that you might not remember that? I'd remember. Yeah, maybe you would, but you'd lie through your teeth about it anyway, wouldn't you? Objection. Mr. Evans, isn't it true that you're a longtime drug dealer and your testimony today is only happening because you signed a deal with Miss Gibbs giving you immunity? Doesn't mean I'm lying. Because you wouldn't lie just to get out of going to prison. No, I would not. Well, how about if the other reason was to get back at someone you've been jealous of your entire life? I've never been jealous of Mike Ross in my entire life. And I just caught you in a lie. Objection, Your Honor. Mr. Evans, my next move is gonna be to call Jenny Griffith to the stand. And she's gonna testify that you lied to her for years about dealing. When she found out about it, she left you for Mike Ross. Objection, badgering. She's also gonna say that you were jealous of his mind your entire life. And when you found out that she left you for him, you were as jealous as a human being can be. Now, is that true or not? Your Honor. Let me rephrase. Is Miss Griffith going to be perjuring herself, or are you? Yeah, I was jealous of him. And if he lied about all of that, what's to make us believe that he wasn't lying about everything else? No further questions, Your Honor. Your Honor, prosecution calls Donna Paulson to the stand. Don't worry, Donna. She won't ask you point blank if you knew Mike was a fraud. What if she does? If you lie, they'll never know. Harvey. What the hell? I just got notification of a tender offer. They're coming after my company. I know, that's why I'm here. So they sent the big guns to fight because it's a hostile takeover. I'm not here because it's a hostile takeover. I'm here because this whole thing is my fault. What do you mean, your fault? The reason you're in the crosshairs is because Daniel Hardman has a vendetta against me. You're telling me we just closed a deal that ensures this company's future and you put it in jeopardy because you pissed off your former partner? Yes, that's what I'm telling you. God damn it! Well, what do you want me to do, Dominic? I want you to stop being an asshole to people. It's too late for that. But it may not be too late for this. Drop us as your attorneys. What? As long as you're connected to us, there's gonna be a target on your back. You let us go, there's a chance it goes away. Harvey, if I was just gonna cut you loose because someone hates you, I wouldn't have hired you in the first place. Because we both know I used to hate you. Thanks, Tom. So what are we gonna do? I'll let you know. But I'll tell you this, they want a war? They got over. I'm glad you're here. I need to tell you something. Whatever it is, it might not matter after I give you this. What is it? Harvey, you didn't just give me my dream. You gave me a family. But I'm going to have a family of my own someday. I can't have all of this hanging over their heads. You're resigning. I am. Now, you want to ask me why I hired you. And I told you it was because life is like this. And I like this. Harvey, please, you can't come in. Let me finish. It was like this. Not because of the risk we're taking. Because of who you are. So you're not disappointed? Are you kidding me? To that speech? If you hadn't done this, I'd be kicking you out. <laughs> and for the record, you're not the only one who got more family out of this deal.
remember me? How could I not? I listened to you for the better part of two weeks. Then I'll get right to it. I need a favor. You got a truck needs fixing? I want to know what that verdict was going to be. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. What difference does it make? It makes all the difference in the world. Then I'll tell you. Because I've been dying to tell somebody. Because it was 12 angry men in there, and I was the one. Yeah, that's right. One by one, I put that jury on my back, and we did the right thing. What's the right thing? You think I don't know what's what? That kid didn't go to law school. You know it, I know it. Everybody in the goddamn room knew it. He's guilty. I didn't say that. That woman didn't make her case. And I'm not letting my country's justice system go to shit on my watch. Say it. Not guilty. They told us you guys cut some kind of deal. Guess you should have had a little more faith in the system. You and I are gonna have a talk right now. Okay, whatever it is, it can wait. I need to tell you something. Does that have something to do with why my sister just left here too upset to go out to dinner? You piece of shit, I knew it. What'd you do to her now? I didn't do anything to her, Lewis. And when I say now, I mean as opposed to before, when you slept with her. That's right. Donna, the one you tried to steal from me at dinner the other night, told Calm me. Calm down, I didn't try to steal anything. You made a promise to me! And even after I told you about when Esther and I were kids and the boys used me to get to her, you still went ahead and betrayed me. Lewis, it had already happened. And I was just now about to tell you. Bullshit. You were never gonna tell me. You were gonna keep it to yourself to the day you die. Lewis, you have to believe me. I swear I was just about to tell what you. What you're about to do is get your ass kicked. All right, watch yourself. Don't threaten something you can't handle. You don't think I can handle you? You also thought I was too stupid to find out, but I did find out. I found out that you're nothing but a lying, cheating... I didn't cheat with Esther. It was two grown people making a goddamn decision for themselves. Well, that decision ended with her walking out of here near tears because she didn't have all the facts, like the fact that you're a serial womanizer who can't stand when anyone else Shut has the it. hell up! So he takes whatever woman's inside... I'm telling because you. Because he's so messed up from whatever goddamn thing happened to him in his pathetic childhood... Shut he the hell up! He can't... Get away from me. You get the hell out of here. Jessica, can I talk to you? I take it you haven't found out what Hardman has on Jack. I haven't, but there's something else. Doesn't matter. I got us the votes. You did? I went to Paul Porter and I turned him and the three votes that he comes with. So we're up by three? No, including Harvey, we're up by one. No, we're not. Hardman's going after Esther's company. And he's not going to back off unless you vote against me. Lewis. I know what you're gonna say, we can stop it. But I went to Jeffrey to get him to not sell his shares and he told me that Hardman's offering 40% over asking. Jeffrey agreed not to sell, but everyone else will. If Hardman can't get the stocks, he's gonna buy the distributor. And if he can't buy the distributor, he's gonna go after the contracts. Lewis. Forstman is his backer! I know. Well, then you know that he has unlimited resources and I can't fight a war on multiple fronts. And I could tell you, if you side with me, we'll figure out a way to save Esther's company, but I have a sister, too. I'm sorry. Lewis. Whatever happens, I want you to know, Pearson will always consider Lit her partner. Jessica, 
If it had been anybody other than his sister, he would never even consider. I know, Donna. And you don't have to apologize for him. Because I know what a bastard Daniel Hardman is. Is there anything I can do? Yes. You still have some time before the vote. I asked Gretchen to find Harvey this morning. I asked the wrong person. I'll find him. What are you doing here? Harvey, I want to talk to you. Good. Because I want to talk to I you. I want you to be my best man. What? Rachel and I want to get married. You are less than a day from prison, and you're thinking about dresses and flowers? Harvey. You know what? I'll be your best man on one condition. That ship has sailed. The hell it has. We can still call Gibbs. I am not calling Gibbs. Get it through your head. This is on me. No, you get it through your head. I am not letting you go to prison for a crime that I committed. Well, I'm not letting you go when you were going to be found innocent. What did you say? That's right, I lied. The verdict was not guilty. No, I don't believe you. Then call the goddamn guy. And why the hell would you lie to me? Because the truth would have broken you. Except now you want to break me. Because it's the only way you're going to let me do this. You think putting a ring on Rachel's finger is going to make everything go away? You know what, Harvey? You want to come to my wedding, you let me know. You want to go to prison? Rule number one, never turn your back on anyone. I know what you're doing and it's not gonna work. I'm not trying to take your place anymore. I'm trying to get you ready like Gloria Danner asked me to because Harvey, you're weak. I am not weak. Yeah, well, hit me. No. Hit Harvey, me. stop it. Listen. Look, you listen you to me. You think you're not we're weak? We're only doing this because you feel Lewis guilty, Lip, got right? But I'm not gonna hit you. Tess's I'm husband not gonna hit you just ass. because you can't Logan handle the Sanders back. Sanders hooked up with Rachel. What do you think he's right gonna now? do with her the second you get behind her? Is this what you want? Did I hate you? Did you make me do this? We lose everything because of you! Mike, please. Let's call Gibbs. I can't, Harvey. I can't. Is defense ready to call its first witness? I am, Your Honor. What? I'm calling my witness. Does prosecution have a problem with that? Objection. This is outrageous, Your Honor. They can't switch attorneys in the middle of a trial. And that would be true, except for the fact that I've been co-counsel on this case from day one. Co-counsel? What planet are you living on? The one where Pierce Inspector Lid is my attorney of record. I have the employee directory right here. My name is in it. It's been there since the beginning of this trial. And if you wanted to object to me, you would have had to have done it at the beginning of this trial. Then I want them waiving all rights to a mistrial, and I want it in the record. Your Honor, I'm not going to be punished just because she didn't understand that I've been representing myself this whole time. He's got a point, Miss Gibbs. Then I want them waiving all rights to a mistrial based on him representing himself. My pleasure, Your Honor. I don't expect we'll be needing a mistrial at all. Then call your first witness. Defense would like to call Gloria Danner to the stand. Please state your name for the jury. Gloria Danner. Mrs. Danner, a number of years ago, your son Clifford was convicted of murder and sentenced to prison. Is that right? Yes, for a crime he didn't commit. How do you know he didn't commit it if he was convicted of it? Because you proved he didn't. Mrs. Danner, can you tell the jury why it is that you're here today testifying and not your son Clifford? He was working late at that diner. It was the only place he could get a job when he got out. Two men came in to rob the place, and when Clifford tried to stop him, he was shot and killed. I'm so sorry. I worked my whole life to put him through school, and he ends up dying in the back of that shit restaurant in that shit part of town. Can you tell the jury why you agreed to come and share your story for me today? Prison ruined Clifford's life. And if you had been our lawyer from day one, 
he never would have been convicted in the first place. Thank you, Gloria. No more questions, Your Honor. Mrs. Danner, I happen to be familiar with your son's case. And I understand that in order to reopen it, Mr. Ross risked increasing his sentence to life. That's correct. Well, I'd like to know how you'd have felt if he lost that gamble. I'd have been devastated. And if that happened, how would you have felt if you then found out that Mr. Ross wasn't even a lawyer after all? Objection, Your Honor. How many hypotheticals can she ask? That's OK. I think everybody in this courtroom knows how they would feel. No more questions, Your Honor. I wouldn't have cared what a piece of paper had to say, because Mr. Ross is the only lawyer I ever ran into that ever gave a damn about my son. Mr. Ross, would you care to call your next witness? I can't imagine anyone being more eloquent than that, Your Honor. Defense rests. Michael James Ross. Yes? You're under arrest for conspiracy to commit fraud. 